Hey everybody, welcome and thank you for tuning in for the Wayworld Outreach Sermon. We believe God is going to highly impact your life. So kick back, relax, and let's get ready to hear the Word of God. Today we're going to talk about planting equals fulfillment. What does that mean? Unless you have seed in the ground, there will be no harvest. So God is saying that this year will be a year of planting, and it will also be a year of harvest. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be in the same year. You're going to plant, and then you're going to get the results of what you planted. The thing about planting, you can plant good and get consequences, and you can plant, I mean, good and get, res, and get results, or you can plant bad and get consequences. So what God is saying, this will be a year that you the ground or your life will flourish. So what he's saying, be aware, be intentional of what you're planting, of what you're planting, and be intentional that you are planting. What does that mean? That you can be expecting results with no seed in the ground. So this is a blessing that God has given us, and it's called the blessing of seed time, and harvest. Say with me, seed time and harvest. It is a blessing that what we put in is going to determine what we get back. We don't live in a society like that. People want, they want to put in as little as they can and get as much as they can back. Or they want to put in nothing and then get a return. That's what those late night commercials are all about. That they offer you a little, little thing that they put on your stomach and it gives you a six pack, so you just watch TV and drink Coke. That doesn't give you a six pack, it just moves around your fat a little bit, it doesn't help you. But I think we're living in a society like that, what we want is great results with no preparation, no investment, no time, no action, no sacrifice, but yet we want a big harvest. So God is saying planting equals fulfillment. So let's look at, look at this blessing that God has given us. Genesis 8:22. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. The order is always the same, planting and then harvest. Planting and harvest go together, and they go in that order. Planting, then Harvest. Planting means this, to put seed in the ground for growth. What always follows a planting season is a harvest season. Harvest is the season of gathering crops, results, or wins, or achievements, or production. This is what God really is saying. What you're putting in is what you're going to get back. Don't you believe the enemy that tells you you're wasting time doing what's right, there will be a win, there will be achievement, there will be results. You're not wasting time loving, forgiving, sharing your faith. It will produce a harvest. I love this. So the purpose of this teaching is just to make us aware that the Spirit of God is telling us to plant seed because this will be a year of fulfillment and harvest. The only limitation to the harvest will be how much good seed we have in the ground. There is no time for procrastination. It's time to plant seed and expect a harvest. This is the time to take action. So what I'm going to do is develop this teaching. On just, um, I'm going to have six points, three and three. The first three points is how three ways to plant seed. And then three facts about planting. Three ways to plant seed. Number one, how do we plant seed? We plant seed by the words we speak. Our words are seeds. Say it with me. Our words are seeds. You know, the, the scripture talks about in Ephesians, where he talks about, to, about the church, and how God cleans his wife or washes his wife, which is the body of Christ, the church, by the words he speaks. And then he presents her at a, as a glorious church. You know what glorious means? That the church looks like him. Well, how does he make a church look like him, act like him, 
love like him. This is how he does it. He pours his word into them. So the purpose of us being here today in this service is for life transformation. We're going to hear the words of God, so hopefully by the time we're done with this service, we'll be thinking a lot more like God, acting more like God, and, and, and even have emotions more like God. So he gives the word. Now, now, words are seeds, and they will produce a harvest. That's why a man could marry a real gentle, quiet young lady, but if he pours in bad words in her, abusive words in her, by the time he's done with her, she's now a gangster. <laughs> she's just rough, man. She said, man, you, I mean, your, your wife, man, she just curses like a sailor. She is tough. She'll cut you in a second. And you have to ask yourself, what did you put into her? Because when you married her, she was a real nice girl. Right? So what you put in is what you're going to get out. So our words will always produce a yield and a harvest. Always. In Proverbs 18:20 it says this, people, that's us, will be rewarded for what they say from the fruit of their mouth of a person. Uh, from the fruit of the mouth of a person is the stomach satisfied. They will be rewarded by how they speak the yield or gain of uh, the gain of their lips satisfies. This is all I'm saying. It's what we say, it's what's going to come back. See, a real smart guy said this. What, what we are saying today, we will harvest tomorrow. He's a real smart, smart guy. What we are saying today, we will. We'll, I sneak one of those in every service. So what we're saying today, we will harvest tomorrow. That's why me and Lisa don't say certain things, because we don't want the harvest of it. Right? I don't, I, I don't speak on my wife. You know, I say, you do that again, I'm gone, I'm leaving, I'm not going nowhere. Why would I want to punish myself and leave? I like my house. But, but do you understand that you're saying the words lightly, or you say, oh, it's no big deal, I just want her to get the point, but there's still seeds? And there could be a time that you actually, you're going to get a harvest of those seeds. So I don't talk divorce to my wife. I, I tell her the opposite. Honey, you, you're stuck with me for the rest of, my, the rest of your life. <laughs> How you like me now, right? The good, the bad, and the ugly. We're sticking this thing out. So I speak the harvest that I want. We got to learn how to not speak what we see, but speak what we desire. We can change our harvest by changing our words. Of course, I'm so depressed. I feel so... Stop it. I know you feel depressed, but the more you say it, the more you're going to plant seeds and the more the, the, har the harvest of depression is going to grow. There has to be a time you say, man, I don't feel very good right now, but I thank the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength, and I am overcoming this thing. This thing is not going to overpower me. My son is not acting right, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. My son will serve God. Speak the words. It will satisfy you. We also plant seeds. We're still talking about we plant seeds by the words we speak. We also plant seeds by speaking God's word. See, God's, God will never give a word without the goal of producing a new harvest in our lives and the lives of those who hear. I want you to get this. When God speaks, he speaks to get results, to produce something new. You're in here. God is not, this is not his goal for you to come in here and leave the same exact way you came in. God is speaking to produce a new harvest in your life, in your family, in your business, in your career, in your thinking, in your heart. God wants to do something new, and that's why we're under right now the influence of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. The farmer is putting out some seed. In Mark 4:14, 4, it says, the farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. Say it with me, I'm a farmer. And I plant seed by taking God's word to others. I live to do this. 
Everywhere I go, I am taking God's word to others. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking salvation to others. I'm taking healing to others. I'm taking hope to others. I'm taking freedom to others. I'm taking the power of God to others. I could go into the darkest neighborhoods in, in the United States of America, and if I have the Word of God, I can change an atmosphere. I can change the results. This is what we do. We don't look at just the problem. We bring the solution, which is God's Word. You know what God is saying? You're a farmer. It's time to get the gossip out of your mouth. It's time to get the cuss words out of your mouth. And it's time to get the Word of God back in your mouth. It's time to get prophetic words back in your mouth. It's time to start speaking what God is saying. Why is it so important to speak what God is saying? Because when you speak what God is saying, you end up getting God's results. When you speak what God is saying, you end up getting God's results. This is, I want you to get this. God's word in your mouth is as powerful as his word in his mouth. So everything God wants to do, he does it through people now. Angels don't come down and say, be healed. We say that. Angels don't come down and cast out demons. We do that in the name of Jesus. Let them go right now in the name. We do that. Angels don't come down and give hope. We do that. A lot of you have never seen angels. Most of us have not seen angels. But I'll tell you why. You don't need to see them. God's given us his word. He's given us his Holy Spirit. And God is speaking right now through believers like you and me. We can change businesses. We can change cities. We can change any atmosphere we're assigned to with the word of God in our mouths. The farmer plants seed by taking God's words to others. See, we will have a harvest of what we say. We will never have it, see it, experience it without saying it. I'll say it again. We will never have it, see it, experience it without saying it. I could tell you what your next harvest is by the words that are coming out of your mouth today. I don't have to guess you. Say, man, you're a prophet. I'm not a prophet. I'm just looking at your mouth. You're a prophet. We want great lives, but we're prophesying darkness and gloom. How can you have a great life if all your mouth is throwing out bad seed? The devil's not everywhere, but he has you planted his seed in your, in your fields. He said, just say what I say so you can start getting my results. That's what Satan's saying. And God says, you say what I say so you can get my results. That's what God is saying. I wonder if your words are consistent with God or consistent with the devil. And that will determine what kind of harvest you're getting. Could it be you're blaming the devil for the words and the seeds that you've planted in your own field? So I got to watch it. I got to watch what I'm saying because my words are powerful so are yours. I got to speak life into my wife, life into my kids, life into you. I'm excited about this word because this word can change your future forever because God has blessed us with seed time and harvest. I can determine what kind of future I'm going to have by the words and the seeds I'm planting today. So every time God wants to change the direction or do a miracle, he sends a word. He sends a word to Abraham. His name was Abram. And Abra, Abram was 90 years old. He didn't have a kid. And God says, hmm, let's change this. But before I could change this, I got to change your name. Because you need to start calling yourself according to your destiny, not according to your condition. So he goes, your name is Abraham. And you know what that meant? You're going to be a father of many nations. I don't have a kid. Don't worry about it. Just keep calling yourself what I've called you, because if you keep calling yourself what I've called you, you will get my results and my harvest. This is the problem. You got to stop calling yourself what the devil's been calling you, what your ex has been calling you, what your mom has been calling you, what your dad's been calling you, what society's been calling you, and you got to start calling yourself what God has been calling you so you can start getting his results. In Mark eleven twenty three 23 says this, For surely I say to you, 
This is Jesus saying, for show. For show. This is for reals. This is what he says, for assuredly I say to you. That means for show. He says, whoever, whoever says to this mountain, this is very important. You got a mountain in the way, you got an obstacle in the way, you got a difficulty in the way. It does not say whoever talks about the mountain, complains about the mountain, cusses out the mountain, screams at the mountain, but it says, whoever says to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says, believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Change doesn't happen until you start speaking change. Breakthrough doesn't happen until you start bre speaking breakthrough. Mountains don't move until you tell them, get up out of here in the name of Jesus. Things are beginning to change right now because they're changing in my mouth. I just hope we get it. Because if your conversation doesn't change, this word went in one ear out the other and it won't produce nothing for you. Hmm. Uh, and the second part of this sermon is Wednesday night, which is the good part. We haven't got to the good part. This is set up. We're gonna talk about the warfare of the words. It's gonna be good Wednesday night. We'll have whatever he, not whatever he wants, or whatever he thinks is whatever he says. You'll never have something you don't have the guts to say. You'll never have a restored marriage and say, we're going to restore this marriage in the name of Jesus. You'll never see kids serve God until you make up, hey, we're going to serve, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to be an example. My kids are going to serve God. We're going to, we're going to handle this. You'll never overcome the challenge that you're facing right now until you start saying, we are more than overcomers through Christ. This right here, what I'm facing, I got victory in this too, and I thank God that I'm not alone. God is with me, and I'm going to learn through this. I'm going to overcome through this. This is going to be a stepping stool to my future. It's not over. Wasn't that such an amazing word from God that we just heard? Now, before we go, can I pray with you really quick? God, I just thank you for the person on the other side of this lens, God. I pray that they continue to watch these sermons, God. And I pray that you continue to reveal yourself to them, God, and reveal your purpose in their life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, if you believe that this word has impacted your life and you would like to do the same for somebody else, won't you consider going out to thewayworldoutreach.org donate. Until then, we'll see you next time, and we love you.